After a pretty interesting series there versus Phoenix One. First of all, Turtle, what happened in game number one? There was a Mordekaiser jungle, or some struggle. What was going on on your side? Uh, it was just a really weird game. Like, we didn't really expect the Mordekaiser, and they exploited our level one pretty well. I guess they studied our level one where Adrian walks bottom, and then they got first blood there. And then uh, I think we tried to fight bottom, but it wasn't really a good idea because Calista already got the first blood, and then Mordekaiser just came and kind of killed us all. Fair enough, of course, you guys managed to rally in games too and actually look very confident in the last few games. Kind of what did you guys do to get yourself over game one? Is it just like, okay, it's Mordecai's or whatever, or how did you guys kind of reset there? Uh, it was really hard to reset. Like, we just had to, like, think about our game plan again and try to be the mortals we really are and just we, we, we thought our game plan and just came in a lot stronger. Well, you guys definitely had a good-looking series there, but kind of moving in now, a very strong-looking season for you guys, only dropping series to TSM. I know you guys are what, finished first last season. Are you happy kind of looking back on the split? Uh, do you guys wish you placed first, or kind of what are your thoughts there? Uh, I still think we had a really good split. Like, we, we, didn't, we didn't get first, but uh, we, I think we, overall we had a pretty good split. Like, we had a lot of good games, and I think we are in a pretty good spot right now. And I think if we just try hard for the next three weeks, we should do really well at playoffs. And then speaking, of course, of playoffs, lots of strong teams now, but you do move in as the second seed, so you will have a bye. Uh, what teams are you maybe worried about moving into the playoffs? Because you do have time to prepare. It's kind of early, but just initial thoughts on the playoff teams. Uh, I think Team Liquid is looking a lot stronger now. Like they, ha like, they play their win conditions pretty well, and they're still improving as a team. Even though they lost today, I think they're still a really strong team, so I'm really worried about Team Liquid. Well, thank you very much, Turtle. It's great to, uh, to talk to you, as always, and congratulations again on such a strong finish to the season. But we are going to pop it back to Dash and the Analyst for one last time today. Thank you very much, Pastry. Immortals getting the job done here in game three, you know, running it back after that unfortunate loss in game one, showing us that they very much still can dominate and accelerate a game against the lower tier Showing team. the importance of best of three format. Yeah. Because, I mean, game one, that's just cheese to the maximum, in a sense. And then you get to see, okay, yeah, we ban out some cheese. Cheese in your queen. Yeah. Well, right, yeah. So, I mean, and we, we saw a similar example back when Echo Fox took the first game off of TSM as yeah. well. But TSM was able to close out that series. So, again, the, the best of three format is benefiting our, our stronger teams and giving them the opportunity to make the, the proper adjustments mid-series and come back stronger. You know, primarily in this one, we saw... Cooney come out here with that Lowy went pretty big in the game. So the ever expanding top lane pool for him up there, given the fact that they're trying the likes of Tom Kench and the GPs again, uh, it seems like you know, he, he's got a diverse pool as ever. Yep. And it's still a little bit troublesome. You don't want to fall into that pit where you're picking way too many things and right. the team still doesn't have a lot of cohesion. So I think that's what they're working on the most, making sure that there's cohesion between the team and you don't really need too much, but when you have Alawi and Vladimir, all you need to do is just those two together. It's really strong. Yeah, there is such a thing as playing too many champions, yeah. right? You know, there's no way you're going to be able to master them all. However, oh, I was going to say, speaking of too many champions, I think P1 might do with some trimming in their eating carry <laughs> position because I, having coached a very enthu uh, vain enthusiast, I think it's a little bit of a poor time to have picked it here. Yeah. Uh, into Sivir, it's such a good 1v1 matchup, but with how Professional League of Legends actually works, and manipulating the waves, especially in a 2v1, it's really not worth it because you just get outmoved around the map, and we saw that Immortals had pressure for basically the entire early game. Right, and then you're choosing a short-range ADC into the likes of Alawi, right? So it's Vlad. Like, yeah, and Vlad, so you don't necessarily have the Well, you're the supposed to, to tumble the tentacles <laughs> in Yeah, the and fight. you tumble the AoE <laughs> and targeted yeah. Vlad ability. Yeah. Excellent, yes. Yeah, yeah, it gets very, gets very tough with that pick, but let's start running through the game itself. First replay is the first blood picked up by Immortals. It's not just a first blood, it's three kills in the top lane. I mean, you have mid lane starting off the fight. You wouldn't really expect Vlad to be here, but just Immortals has the inside track on this fight. While they're blowing everything up for Belcher, killing Vlad with the jungle support is usually impossible. And you have Vayne just blowing on her ultimate right from the start. Nice little flash from Rainover. And they're just going to be able to chase all this way because Sivir's going to come in, join the fight with the Sivir. And the poorly timed Zillion ultimate is going to do do them dirty because Mash is going to get out and Flash Boomerang and ultimately they just clean this up. And great Tarek stuns right there. Right, and I, th I think it's the kind of thing you can see that they, that fight was not exceptionally well planned. The cast did a good job pointing out that they had no deep vision. Mm -hmm. Mash wasn't really close at the start, so by the time he gets over there, his support's almost dead. And then he, after he stuns Rain over, he tumbles closer to the Vlad and puts himself sandwiched between the two. Yeah, the flash. Support and jungle does not kill mid. Vlad. No. Yeah, does very, not very, kill Vlad. Very, very <laughs> not Vlad especially. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do like to see Adrian pulling out the uh, Tarek, though, yeah. because we were just mentioning how he's looked shaky on a couple of the 
squishier supports. So yeah. just, yeah, like we know he can play Soraka until he's blue in the face, but, you know, struggling a little bit on the Sona here showing that he's got the Tarek so he can play those melee, melee matchups, the Tom Kench in the prior uh, in the prior game as well. Moving on to our next replay, 21-30 into the game. Mortals, another three for zero. This time going to pick the Baron up on the back end of this as well. And it's crazy that this starts after a fight that just happened with Pobelter getting super low and then once again here he gets into a little bit of a scuffle with the Vayne and the Olaf but he's never really in too much danger and he's going to set up uh, Huni for this monster flash W and double kill which leads right into the Baron convenience. Yeah, the old heal plus the Q there basically brought him from 5% to 50%. Yeah, as uh, someone who's played Olaf quite a bit, if you play Olaf and you're trying to kill Vlad, especially when it's this new Vlad, you do not you do not mess with Vlad at all. Right. You have no chance. You don't have enough damage to actually go through his sustain. Well, not if you build Titanic Hydra. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and the Vlad just uh, okay. far. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm 100% with you. All right. Player of the game is going to Pope Belter 2 0 and 7 on the Vladimir. Just total control of that game in reality. I mean, Immortals, the team, had control of the game, so Vladimir is allowed to kind of run rampant. He just crushed mid lane matchups so hard. Kobe was pointing out that while he didn't have a lot of kills, that CS deficit was so mm. large that it equals to having one or even two kills in that lane. And just being able to constantly push Zillion, force him to use that teleport to actually stay in lane is just so huge because once that matchup gets going, Zillion's just kind of stuck as being a support as opposed to a mid laner with utility. Right, and of course, just the damage dealt and the number of those skirmishes, the fact that he was able to sustain up and stay in the fight for so long. He had the most damage by, I think, almost 10k. It was, it was incredible. A valiant effort by Phoenix One, but ultimately they were unsuccessful in taking down our other top team in Immortals. Now we've got one more day of regular season competition, so let's see how the league currently stands. The top five slots are locked in with TSM in first, followed by Immortals, Cloud9, CLG, and Liquid. Team Envy currently holds sixth place and the last playoff spot. Apex is in seventh and we'll see if they can overtake Team Envy tomorrow. Now at the bottom of the standings, out of playoff contention are Phoenix One Energy and Echo Fox. For a look at the matches coming your way on the final day of the summer split, in the battle arena, TSM takes on Energy, followed by the battle between Liquid and Cloud9. Over on NALCS2, CFCLG can stuff Apex's dreams of a playoff finish before Team Envy has a chance to lock their spot versus Echo Fox. Now once again, when we look at those matches tomorrow, it's important to note that if Apex wins their, or if Envy rather wins their match against Echo Fox, it will not have mattered what Apex done had done early in the day. So Apex is relying on both a victory for themselves and a loss out of Envy in order to snag that sixth place slot. We do, though, know, however, that Cloud9 for sure is number three. And I kind of want to get a quick assessment from you guys of that playoff picture, just as Pastry asked Wild Turtle. Assessment of our top six as it stands right now. I think the one two are pretty clear. I think even C9 at three, they might not be as explosive as some other people. They're a lot more consistent. We saw that they couldn't smash, you know, uh, Echo Fox in, in 20 minutes, but they they won. They're in their world. They're, the they're the well rounded team. Right. Out of all and things. then you saw today. Even though CLG won, they struggled a little bit, and Team Liquid lost and looked pretty terrible at different parts, parts in that series. So I think uh, the game that they play versus C9 will be a very big confidence booster, where yes. if they have another bad series, it could look really grim for them. All right, so Crumbs, now break it down matchup-wise for me. So we've got Cloud9 currently playing Envy in the 3-6 matchup, and then Team Liquid, or rather, CLG in the 4 slot, Team Liquid in the 5 slot. <laughs> you almost said Team Liquid yeah. in the 4 <laughs> slot. Yeah, yeah exactly. Natural. Yeah, I was well, yeah. So, uh, but so br it, those two matchups, how do you feel they go? I think Cloud9 will easily be able to beat the 6th seed team. We've seen them take on Apex, and we've seen them take on Envy before. And while some of the games might have gone to three series, ultimately it did look mostly in control for Cloud9. That's when they're kind of in their slump. They're a little bit back on track right now, and I think that they'll keep on to it. But I do think that Apex, if they somehow get that playoff spot, if Echo Fox miraculously pulls a win out of the rabbit hole, they'll be able to actually be more of a contestant with Cloud9, mm -hmm. whereas you have CLG versus TL, and I think it's going to be a matchup that's reminiscent of last split, where it's just so close. I don't think there's really any way of predicting how this one will go, because these, these teams are kind of swingy and a little bit emotional as well, that that Very just has so. such an impact on the matchups. Yeah, I think they just, inter they, they're so different, kind of. They where, probably hate each other. Yeah, <laughs> I would think so, the <laughs> amount of times they bump into each other in playoffs, but Team Liquid, super aggressive borderline stupid at times with yep. how, yeah. how aggressive they get. Yep. That CLG, border has been crossed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> CLG, definitely a smarter team. They know when to pull back on the reins, but can also play aggressive. So yeah. I think whoever jumps out to a lead, 
you know, CLG might have to pull back. If they start losing, Team Liquid will just keep going full force. And it's this clash of styles I find very interesting because they are so closely matched, I think. All right, well, only one day of games left to play. It's going to do it for us here, though, tonight. Now for myself, Mark Crumbs, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and good night. Thank you so much for joining us.